Hey everybody, Corey Longnecker here with Vice and Villainy Presents Foundry VTT. Um, just another video, quick, this one's going to be a little bit quicker than the others because we're covering something that a lot of people don't use, which is journals. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. Switch over to here and we can show you what's up. Okay, so today I'm really going to be talking about just a couple of uh, five basic things. The crashes, 5e downtime tracking, GM notes, one journal, pincushion, and world anvil uh, modules. So those five. Um, I use world anvil, not everybody does, but it does integrate nicely and it's super handy for me. Um, and yeah, let's just dive right in here. So let's start with the... Um, crash is down my tracking and that's in my opinion kind of handy because what I do as a, as a GM with my players is in between game sessions I say if there's because usually that occurs we usually stop a game and they're back at an inn or camping or, or doing something where their safety is not uh, in question um, from, from anything imminent, right? Like they're not, you know, I'm not going to let them do it if we're in the middle of fighting a, a dragon or something like that. But what I do is I tell them if there's anything you want to work on, if there's a skill you want to try to do, if you're, if you're trying to, you know, add some, you know, mag make an, make a magic item or, or, you know, improve your armor or a weapon or things like that. If there's something you want to tinker with, if you want to carve, if you want to practice a skill of carving, um, I let them do that in the in-between time and I just tell them, you know, how much, I ask them how much time they want to spend on it and, and whatnot. Um, and I give them, you know, after so many sessions, a new skill or an improved skill or a bonus or something like that. Um, but allows them to kind of have something to do in between game sessions. And I think this is a really nice way to do it because it allows them to kind of like track it and update it and, things of that nature. So this isn't technically a journal. This is part of their character sheet. Um, and let's just show you what it would look like. So if I've got C here, you'll notice way over here on the right is something called downtime. Um, and that's what this, this does is it adds this tab here and it allows you to say, I'm going to work on Scrimshaw carving of bone and, and ivory of stuff like that. Um, and the progression type, how is it going to happen? Is it going to be happening? Like you have to roll an ability check, uh, to, to improve it. Or is it simple? Like, you know, the GM just lets you, or is it DC based? Like you have to roll against it, um, doing it that way. So practice carving. Okay. So maybe that's what it is. Create. So now you've got this scrimshaw here. Um, there's a, a percentage bar that tells you how far it is and, and basically a progress. So you can say, okay, you've, you've made it one out of 10, 10%. You know, you can just go that way. You can edit it, you can delete it. And then if you are using one of the other ones, you can roll against it, um, which is kind of cool. So yeah, it's a, it's just a neat little, um, just do another one so we can show it. So prove armor. And we're going to make this a DC. Um, make it lighter while keeping AC. Okay. So this is, we're going to call it, it's, it's here. It's an intelligence. Um, it's intelligence based, which is interesting, but you can change it here. Um, after you create it, you can go back in and change it. So we're going to call this, uh, uh, a skill and maybe it's, um, you know, survival, or if you did want to do it, maybe it's a, it is intelligence. Maybe to, to do it, you have to figure it out. So let's, let's, let's keep it as that. And the success required, uh, you need to do five of them and the, check is a 10. Well, that sounds pretty average. Um, maybe that they're just working on, um, you know, cutting little pieces here and there and, 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 or, or weaving in something lighter. So you'd have them roll against it. 
Um, they roll to the DM if you want them to. If there's a situational bonus, normal roll. They roll an eight, so that doesn't make it. Um, but yeah, so this is a cool little feature. Uh, it allows you to do that. Um, I dig it. And then you can look at the change log if you are the GM and take a look at everything they're doing. And if you don't want to apply it, you can have it dismissed. So it's a neat little function that's called crashes 5e downtime. It is available in the foundry module marketplace. Uh, next one we're going to look at is called uh, GM notes. So let me bring that one up real quick. We're going to look at the configuration settings for it. Show full GM note label. If checked, only the icon will appear. Um, so let's go ahead and create a note here. Um, and you're seeing something else here, and I'll get to that in a minute. This is this is the one journal. Um, create a new journal entry. We're going to call it testing. Real um, original stuff here. We've got testing. Um, I can drag that onto here and update my map note. Yeah, that's uh, not really super. <laughs> it doesn't appear to be doing show full GM note label. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that. Hmm. Let me look at this again. Hold, please. Okay, sorry about that. Total brain fart. Wasn't even thinking. So what GM Notes does is a little bit easier. Um, so let's say you've got an actor or an item or anything that's already out here, um, you know, that you that you want to add a personal note for that only you can see. You can double click it to open their thing and you'll see there's a new tab up here called GM Notes. You can click on that um, and you can start making notes. So you can take a note here. Um, Scared of spiders. Um, and then you can move it to your GM notes or move it to the description, move GM notes to the description of the character. So if we want to move that to GM notes, there I have it there in my GM notes. And if I close and come back out, I'll know that it's scared of spiders. If I want to create a new one, um, also fond of cheesecake. You can move the GM notes to the description. So here it's move description to GM notes, move GM notes to description. So it'll it'll move things back and forth. So as you save one, it'll go to the other and vice versa. So I've got, got this here. We're going to move description GM notes and it's gonna keep adding those things to the GM notes and move them back and forth. Um, so it's pretty neat stuff. Uh, it's very simple, but it's a good way if you're in the middle of a game to and 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 maybe your player does something and that you want to remember, you can quickly boom, jump into GM notes, throw it in there um, and and have a record of it. So GM notes is is pretty cool. I'm gonna delete those out because that's not what she's doing. Um, yeah, so that's GM notes. Really handy, cool stuff. Uh, let's jump to the next one, which is one journal, which is what you kind of saw just a minute ago. Um, and I'll use this as an example because it's here. So what one journal does is it opens up a new window and it puts all of your journal entry access into it. Now this is cool for a lot of reasons. It allows you to jump around in, you know, opposition to what you had to do before with opening folders and double clicking and, and it opens new notes here. This puts it all in its own window and this really comes into its own when you combine it with pop out. Um, I think these two together really, really make this useful, especially as a GM in that I don't want to close in my space. As you're looking right now, I can't see the map. I can't see the tokens. I'd have to move this like you know, make it smaller, uh, get it out of the way, close out of it, whatever. But if I use pop out and I won't do it because I've got multiple monitors and you won't see it, but you can drag it to another, you know, pop it out into a new window, put it on another monitor um, and you have access to it there. You can keep it up and click between things and look at it. And then you can just 
have your map and, and your Foundry tabletop ready to go right there. So it's an easy way to have access to all your journal notes in one place. Um, super, super helpful. I've really become a big fan of, of one journal. It's a really neat, it's a really neat um, item. And you can, and it has all the functionality that you would from the regular thing. It just moves it all into one screen. So really cool. Um, I, I'm really down with that one. Uh, let's see. Let me look up what's going to be next and then we'll do that. I think it's going to be pin cushion, but let me double check. Okay. So the next, um, the next one is in fact pin cushion and pin cushions really neat, uh, in that it's really simple. So let's say I want to, um, create a note here that there's going to be a table full of, of drunks. Uh, I can go to my journal entry here and just double click here and say table of drunkards. Save it. And then you'll see it creates the journal over here. And then it gives me some options. Um, most interesting is this one right here where I can change the icon. So if I wanted to make it like a barrel to kind of remind me of that, um, it's got all these different things you can use. Uh, or even better, here's a tankard. Update map note. And I just put that right there, and that is a table of drunkards. Um, basically, you can use any icon you want there. It, it, it allows you to change them. Um, you can double-click the canvas while on the notes layer and create a map pin in corresponding journal entry, which is what I just did. And then um, if you hover over it you'll be able to if there was um if there were any notes in here uh so let's do this for people all highly okay Just... sorry Poor people, toxic, save, okay. So now if I hover over it, and it doesn't want to do what it's doing. Hmm. Oh well, that's what it says it does in its description, so, um, Oh, there it goes. It just tells you right there. It's doing it. It doesn't tell you the inside. Um, that's a different, that's something different. But it tells you that's your table of drunkards. Um, and then you can choose to display those or not. Um, yeah, turn that on. You can hover over it. That's your table of drunkards. Good reminder. So that is pincushion. Really cool, simple way to drop notes all over the place for yourself. Um, if that's your thing. I, I use it from time to time. It's, I don't use it all the time, but... It's something I'm starting to do more and more. What else do we have here? Oh, last but not least, World Anvil. So I use World Anvil. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just I've found that in my games it's a way to help organize the chaos that's up here um, in a really meaningful way, especially with categories and things like that. And the fact that it integrates into Foundry is really cool. And what you can do is you'll see down here when you have the module and you have a World Anvil account, um, it'll sync between the two. And any changes you make in World Anvil, you can come down here. Um, you'll have a token that you have to use and, and insert. I don't have one for this because I'm using it in my other game. Um, but it'll pull and allow you to pull all of your items in from your World Anvil world. It'll put them in folders and categorize them over here in journals. And there's a world anvil one. And then under it, you can put all your things. And then as you make changes in world anvil, you can, uh, sync them up, um, and, and bring, bring stuff over. And it's just a really cool tool. If you use world anvil so that you can do all your note taking in one place and then bring that into your world without having to copy and paste and do all this formatting. Um, and it even gives you a link back, it even gives you a link back. So let me show you the here. Anvil. 
um, just to show you what it looks like here. There's a really good video here, and I'll link to that um, so that you have it. So let me just grab that for you, and I'll put that in the description. Um, but it's easy. You can see here, like, you can add a folder. Here's your places of interest. Here's your political organizations. Um, you know, it'll, it'll do everything. It's super, super helpful. And it goes between the two. Um, and it puts it all in one place. And then when used in conjunction with pop out and one journal, you've got such a powerful way to be in control of all of the notes that you take, um, for reference. So, I've really tried to scale down how much I pre-plan for my games. Um, I try to do a little less planning and a little more ad hoc, but there's some things that you just need to be able to have a little history. Um, you know, if there's an organization, you need to have a little things to be able to feed your players so that if they come back and ask again, you, you, you've got reference. And that's what this is great for me for. So I love this. Um, I do use it. And found it very, very helpful to me. So I um, highly suggest that if you do have a World Anvil account and you're using it to go ahead and do that. I believe you have to have a paid World Anvil account to make that work. Um, but I don't really remember since I already had a paid account. It wasn't something I, I, I had to worry about. But yeah, it's, uh, it's cool and it's super, super helpful. Um, I highly suggest doing it and it just helps with organization if you already have it. So those are some simple things that, that we've got. Um, yeah, just five really, really simple, uh, modules that really make it easier to organize your thoughts, uh, and stuff like that. So thanks for tuning in. Um, going to be out for a little bit, so I'm not going to have, um, anything next. Well, this will come out next week, but, um, won't have anything the week after that, but what I'm going to do for the next video is, um, new modules are always coming out. So I'm going to do, uh, kind of go back and look at some of the categories that I've already done videos for and find some new modules that would go into those categories that I have found very useful. Um, just to, just to throw that out there. It's, or, or things that I didn't use before that, that I now use, they may not be new, but I've found some functionality in them that I didn't know existed. So that'll be the next video. And then the video after that, I'm going to be doing a look at some of the either bigger, um, bigger modules, like that are a little more complicated, something like trigger happy or multi-level tokens. Um, some things that are built in that a lot of people may not be aware of like B shape and polymorph. It's, it's already built into foundry. Um, and just some other, um, other modules that while they did fit into some of the other categories, I think they're really useful and I kind of wanted to de dedicate a video to where I focus on them a little bit more. So I've got some stuff planned for that. Um, and then I'm just going to show you how to get some roll tables and macros. I don't use macros enough as I probably should just because I don't have time. But the next couple videos will focus on the last two videos. will look at macros and, and roll tables um, where to get them, how to use them, stuff like that. So thanks for stopping by and we'll talk to you later.